All right, welcome back, and this is part two of my Forms to SharePoint series, basically where we're going to talk about some of the less common or more complex question types uh, in Microsoft Forms and how we go about getting that data into SharePoint. Uh, so first off, just to kind of highlight which columns were which types of questions we're going to talk about here, we've got multi-select choice questions, which are actually pretty common. Uh, in forms, but uh, so this really falls into the more complex scenario as opposed to less common. But then there's also ranking, rating, and net promoter score. I'm kind of lumping those together because the data is in a similar format. Uh, that is, it's a number, a string, but with a number value. Um, Likert scale questions, and then file upload questions. So first off, multi-select choice fields. Now, as I said, these are it's fairly common for people to want to include a multi-select choice field in a form um, where basically you're giving people five or six choices, however many, and you want to allow selecting multiples of them. Uh, now, the main difference is the way that the, the data is coming in from the get response details action. So for a single select question, the choice value is simply that, the text of the choice value that was selected. End of story. Uh, however, when you allow multiple selections, because there could be more than one choice, uh, Forms puts that into an array format. So we've got square brackets and double quotes surrounding each possible value. Now in this case, even if only one is selected, it's still formatted as an array. Um, so you still need to account for that. Uh, and then if multiple choices are selected, basically each is surrounded by double quotes and they are each separated by a comma. Now you could do some text manipulation to replace, you know, remove the, the square brackets and change the double quotes, etc. But there's actually a much easier way to do that. Basically what we need is a JSON expression to basically say, hey, this is JSON data, treat it as an array, and then a select action to convert that array into the format that SharePoint wants. So if we take a look at our SharePoint list, we're going to add, first add a column here for our question. Actually, let's go to the form first to see what those choices are. So in our multi-select choice question, we've got choices one through four. So if I jump over to SharePoint, add a column, and again, make this choice, and call this multi-select choice. And right now it's got choices one through three. I'm just gonna add another so we have four to match what's in the form. And then I need to open up more options and toggle allow multiple selections to yes. So that's how you make a choice column a multi-select choice column. All right, so now we've got the column in our SharePoint list. We've got the choices on our form. Let's take a look in the flow, how we need to modify it to accept that. So I'm just going to edit our flow here. And it's the same one that we used in the first video. So now when I expand create item, you'll see here is the multi-select choice value column. And basically, let's first take a look at just the format that it's going to use. So if we select one and then select another and we click the button here to switch this to array view, this is basically what SharePoint needs to populate that field. So it needs the, 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 the text strings in this array object notation with a value as the property. So basically it's it's a an array of objects with one property called value and the value of that. Now how do we get to that from our response data in forms? Well we need to in this case use a couple uh, use a select action. So we'll add a new action and search for select. It is the data operation. And select is a good multi-purpose or multi-use action whenever you have an array of data and you want to do something with it in terms of extracting specific columns or doing any kind of manipulation of the text or the, the, the contents of those columns. 
So in this case, for the input, I need to basically what I want to get is the multi-select choice question value, but uh, I need to use the JSON expression to kind of let it know that this input is in JSON format. So I'll select expression and type in JSON and open quote, or I'm sorry, open parenthesis. And then I can switch back to the dynamic content, select our choice question multi-select. And then as shown down here, we need the property name of value. So I'll just copy that, paste it in there. And then for the value of this, I need to use another expression, but very simply, this is just item. Not, not in 10, but item open and close parenthesis. That just means the current item in that array. And I'll just give this a name. Select multi select choice values. That's it. <clears throat> and then I can just erase this whole array, everything in there, and just drop in the output of that select statement and hit save. And now if we go over to our form, preview this. And we'll just select a date of the 27th. And here we'll select one, two, four, and submit. And looking at our list, there is our form response and there is choice one, choice two, choice four. So pretty easy, but again, just remember that the choices shown here need to match the choices on the form and vice versa. So if you update one, be sure to update the other. All right, so that is multi-select choice columns. That's probably the most uh, of these kind of rare or complex types that's most like one you're most likely to run into. But some others like ranking questions, uh, I'm just going to kind of talk through. We're not actually going to add all of these to that SharePoint list, but I just want to talk about the type of data that's coming back and how you would then put that into your SharePoint, SharePoint list. So a ranking question, I can't ever say that I've used a ranking question on a form that was dropping data into SharePoint, but there could be a, you know, maybe there's a use case I'm not factoring in or not thinking of. But the bottom line is that whatever your choices are, whatever the, the, the selections are uh, on the form, you're simply getting that as text with comma separated values. So if we go, go and fill out our form here, and we'll just say long, no, that was short, sorry. And we'll just select the date here, again, the 27th, say two and four. So let's say this was four, one, three, two. That's the way I'm gonna rank those. And we submit that. <clears throat> if we look at our flow run, and we'll see that last one was just submitted a second ago. So when we look at the response details, the ranking question response is simply those choices separated by commas. So no, it's not an array the way that multi-select choice questions are. It's just a string with commas. So if you wanted to separate this into maybe four separate columns, like first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, you could basically parse this out and say, you know, the, the element one, uh, element zero actually, um, basically split this into an array and then grab the individual elements of that array. I'm not going to get into showing you how to do that here, but that's probably the way I would do it if that were the choice or, or if that were a requirement. Um, but in, in some cases, it might just be easy enough to just drop that into the, you know, a text column in your list. Kind of depends on your use case. So if you have a specific use case where you want to split that ranking question out, throw that in the comments and I will try to get a video on how you would actually go about doing that. But it's a little more complicated than I want to get into in this session. So we'll 
hold that for another time. Now, if we look at the other question types, uh, rating net promoter score questions, these both return a number, but it's a number formatted as text. Um, so it kind of depends what you want to do with that number. If it were simply a, a, if you just simply needed the number to say what the ranking was or what the, I'm sorry, what the rating was, whether it was on a scale of 1 to 10, whatever, whatever it is, um, you could just store that as a as a text value. If you wanted it to actually be a number, you would just need to make sure to use the INT expression. So just to show you what I mean by that, let's jump over and I'm going to add another column here for our number, but I'm going to we use the number column and let's say we did want this to be the rating so it'll be you know on a scale of 1 to 10 uh, so I'll add a number and call this rating now if we were using net promoter score be just call it whatever you want this to be and hit save now by making this a number column it does require that the input be a number so if we edit our flow now and go to our create item action and select click inside the rating field here it's filtering down the dynamic content to only those things that it knows are numbers so if we want to even though the the data from the rating question is coming in as what we think is a number it's just text it's a string that happens to be where the character happens to be the number that was selected but to make that a number in you know to, to cast it as an actual number value we need to use an expression which is the integer expression or int and then open the parenthesis and then select the rating question click OK and save so now if we go and fill out our form again and six and go to our rating question now you'll see even if you just make the rating question out of 10 it's pretty much very similar to the net promoter score question the only difference is that on the net promoter score question you have these customizable labels to say not like you know not at all likely or extremely likely and you can change those but if you wanted to use a rating question instead of that you would just kind of explain what the scale is in the question itself or a subtitle but let's say I select 8 out of 10 there and submit that and we take a look at our list there we go we have the number 8 in there pretty exciting I know and again, it would be the same thing with the net promoter score. If you want to store it as a number that's going to be used to maybe perform a calculation or whatever it might be, just make sure that you use that integer expression to convert that string to a number. Uh, Likert scales are interesting because they're sort of a meta question. Uh, in other words, each, you know, when you create a Likert question or a Likert scale question, if I go back here, and we look at our Likert scale we've got statement one and statement two and each of them has option one through option five as choices so the idea would be like if you're rating different properties or different aspects of an event like the venue the food the entertainment etc uh, you would have sort of highly enjoyed highly did not enjoy whatever it might be um, so you imagine that each of these statements is going to have a response rating the, the level of agreement with that statement. Now, <clears throat> the, the, the interesting thing, as I said, is that when these responses come in, each one is coming in as a separate response. So even though it's one question, there are multiple fields or multiple values coming in for it. So if I preview this, and again, we'll just do the standard short, long, one, and only one. Say six. And for here, we'll say that statement one, I'm going to select option five. Statement two, we'll select option two. 
submit that. And when we look at the run history, so we look at the, the instance of that flow run, and then look at the values, the response details, we can see there is statement one and statement two as two completely separate inputs, two com or really outputs of this response details action. But if we look at the raw inputs, um, we'll see there's option two, option five. So these are the, within this format or the, the, the response details here, this is the GUID uh, or the ID of that question. But the point is that for that one question, we're getting two separate column values or two separate uh, data points coming in. So you just need to account for that. So you probably would want to have a separate column to store each of those, you know, basically a separate column for each statement as you're building your, your list in SharePoint. Um, but again, I, I've yet to actually work on a project that used those and brought that data into SharePoint, but that's how I would do it. Just create a separate text column for each of the statements and then store whatever the value is appropriate to that. Uh, and then the last one, which is again falls into the complex rather than rare because I, a lot of people like using file upload questions on Microsoft Forms because it's a good way to collect a an artifact, a, whether it's a, you know a resume or a presentation, whatever the file is, having a way for people to attach that to a form response, even though it is strictly internal to your organization, um, is really useful. The thing is there there are a lot of different pieces at play there. There are a lot of different ways you can go with that file, whether you want to attach it as an item or as an attachment to the list item, whether you want to save it in a SharePoint document library, whether you want to send it as an email attachment, there are a bunch of different ways to, to work with that file data um, based on the, the form response. So rather than go into all that here, I'm just going to refer you to another playlist I have that it goes into kind of all the different details on that basically between group forms between personal forms where the files get stored how to get the get the file data how to store it how to put it in an array if there are multiple files etc so that that playlist will serve as, as kind of your go-to for all the things around that particular aspect of forms and file uploads um, so yeah that's pretty much all i have for today so hopefully this was useful to you if it was by all means, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you do have any questions, problems, or use case for something that I didn't cover here, throw that in the comments down below, and I'll be happy to take a look at it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.